With no prior game experience, I am betting the farm on the success of this game. Be the goodest boy, race against the wild, rescue your owner from the underworld. When I got laid off three months ago, I panicked. With a baby due soon, I was freaking out trying to find any way to make money in a bad market. After three layoffs in 10 years as a product designer, the writing was on the wall. I needed to make a change. I committed right then and there to help people fulfill their dreams of working in the games industry. And I'm starting with myself. I'm building a game that is exclusively based around jumping with no other player input. The goal of this is to keep scope low and polish high. Within one month, I want a demo released, two months is early access, and three months is launch. Now first up, we need to design the game if we're gonna do any of that sort of stuff. I wanted to do only one player action, taking a lot of inspiration from games like Cursor Blade. I made an arbitrary decision to pick jumping as the main mechanic. The problem is I kept getting stuck in my first idea, which was basically just burrito bison, but vertical. I needed some sort of structure to break me free of that because having been a product designer for 10 years, I know intimately that the very first idea that you have usually isn't the best one. So I looked up an emotion wheel and picked some at random. I brainstormed five different ideas or themes for each emotion, and I picked the top ones that seemed interesting to me. After that, I sorted them and force ranked them by what I would be excited to build and what I felt might lead to a manageable scope. That left me at the end with competing deities and jealousy for our emotion. Ooh, so good. I brainstormed five different ideas inside of that theme. I picked my favorite concept, remixed it with a bunch of previous ideas that were generated, and I ended up with this concept of a dog trying to resurrect his dead owner by winning a race between competing jealous gods of nature. Now already we started to get some design direction just from that simple concept. For example, Hades' boon system was already coming to mind as a big inspiration for all this. With that being said though, I still didn't have an idea of what form this game was going to take. What was the gameplay really going to be when we got down to brass tacks? So I did a sketching exercise to try and conceptualize what it would actually look and play like. The end state of this led to an idea of allocating level ups to different gods that you get from a limited pool. Then the relationships that those gods have determine how the world evolves over time. So if you are really tight with the god of grass, the god of fire is really gonna not like you very much. He's gonna send his enemies and his hazards to you. The whole landscape can shift over time based on the player's decisions. And that felt really, really fun. Also absolutely horrifying. Are we bloating the scope of this thing way far out of control already? This whole endeavor has resulted in quite a lot of work for me to do. I've been working more hours than I ever have before, and it's still not even close to being enough to do all the things that I feel like I need to do. Additionally, my daughter is at a phase of life where she's really wanting a lot of attention from her mom and dad. My wife is incredibly pregnant and her ability to do things is diminishing. And we have this newborn coming soon that we gotta get ready for. All of this could sum up into a very volatile work situation. I'm not gonna lie, but there have been nights where my wife and I have had to have long, hard talks about how is this actually gonna work. However, those discussions led us to coming up with better models for financial stability and paths to progress forward. And even though they were really hard discussions, I'm so grateful for them and for my wife for bringing them up. I feel I have a much better grasp now of how to move forward. Now, I knew I needed to prototype the game ideas to see if they were even fun or interesting, but also to get an idea of where the scope was getting off of track or not. So before we ever jumped into code, I did a really quick pseudo paper prototype, just digitally in a whiteboard. And it taught me a lot of different things I need to be aware of as I move forward. Now, I've been streaming my progress over the past few months while I've been trying to learn how to build these games. And Chaz has been teaching me a lot about how to develop and code in a cleaner and faster way. And I really wanted to try implementing those lessons that they've been teaching me. I began this project by architecting out all of the different attributes, objects, and systems we were going to have in play during this game. From there, I was able to get a much cleaner idea of what this thing was actually going to be, and I could mark out how to structure our data. I began by implementing structs, which quickly failed, and people then immediately started teaching me about constructors. 
Sounds like the same thing to me, but no it's not. After a long detour of learning about constructors and how they're different, as well as some Olympic level pixel art, I might add, I finally, finally got a character on the screen. I brought in some quick platform assets I found online for free and started to work on this jump. And that's when all the problems started. I could not believe how difficult this was. Trying to create a collision system to get the movement working took days of effort. I even had the constant support of over a dozen people online who were far better programmers than I am. And it still took that long. Eventually, it wasn't great, but I at least got it functioning. We could play around, we could jump on the platforms and make progress. Calling it there for a little while, I moved to the tribute that you could pick up and dedicate to the various different gods. I included a King of the Hills style mechanic for really big ones that you could pick up. The idea was to force you to stand still for a little while, and then the player would have to predict if they were gonna be able to actually open this safely or not. How could they create space in order to be able to be a sitting target? One of our community members, GameMaker2D Fighters, sent me a cool script to spawn in platforms at random Y intervals, and all of a sudden we had a stew going. I took a quick break to get an art and animation tutoring session in from GameMaker2D Fighters, and then I spent a long time trying to refine the jump and make it feel good to actually traverse these platforms. Now, I admit, I got way too distracted here, and I was way too focused on game feel way too early. Instead of getting a prototype up and running that we could actually test and get more information on. Even now, the collisions really still aren't quite working. It's taking so much longer than I would have expected to really iron this out, and it has set me back really heavily. All wasn't lost, though. I realized when I was trying to improve the game feel that I was essentially doing some self-prototyping and testing. I realized that there really needed to be more tools at the player's disposal at the start of the game. Those early jumps are so difficult to gauge and navigate well, Remember, they only have one button to dictate movement. They can't move left or right, they can only jump. So we need to have a lot of control in one button press. I ended up bringing in a double jump and a ground pound to both help them extend the distance that they travel, as well as shorten that X distance travel. So you jump up and then you can slam down. Sort of like an emergency stop button. Now, here's my dirty secret about all this. I had no idea how far behind I was getting because I didn't have any of the deadlines in my head that I talked about at the start of this video. I just thought I wanna make a high polished game. It wasn't until this week went a lot slower in building than I thought it would and I started watching other devlogs trying to learn from them how they build things quickly that I realized I really need to have some sort of a roadmap to keep myself accountable and on track. So last night, I sat down and wrote out when I need to get everything done by, so that I could actually release a product that makes money and levels my skill set up without lingering in a multi-year development cycle. It reminds me of a story that my wife told me of a pottery class that tried an experiment. One version of this class was asked to make one pot as well as they possibly could over the course of the semester. The other version of the course was told to make one pot every week. The cohort that got the assignment to make one pot every week, by the end, on average, was doing tremendously higher quality pots than the cohort that only ever did one. So yeah, I'm gonna work on polishing this as much as I possibly can. But I also have to respect time and the iterative process. I need to keep in mind that building lots of things is gonna be more valuable than building one thing that never sees the light of day because it took so long. Now I have a timeline, and I'm feeling like I'm taking charge of the project again. I've got a definitive goal of getting this prototype done within a few days so that I can really refine the movement over the next week. By the way, that's the goal for next Saturday, have the player's movement finalized. The truth is that even though I'm working far more hours right now, I have so much more energy than I have ever had before. I'm tremendously engaged in trying to help people grow and because I'm loving what I'm doing and I feel empowered to make a difference in what I'm trying to accomplish, I don't have that same type of stress I had when I was a full-time employee. Even if I may be spending fewer hours with my family overall, I have so much more capacity to be truly with them when I am with them. And that is making a very big difference. 
Now, it's all a balance, and we're still trying to figure things out. But I have never felt happier or more fulfilled in any of my professional endeavors than I am right now. And I hope you can find the same thing. If this has been helpful to you, if you like this story, then I invite you to come follow along with us. We're building a charitable organization devoted to helping individuals build the skill sets they need in order to enter the games industry. We have an amazing community of people ranging from students to hobbyists to full-time developers that are storied in their careers. Come hang out with us, come learn from us, and contribute with us. We all need to be enriched by you. We're all sharing our projects, and we all want to celebrate each other's successes. Subscribe, follow along with us, and I wish you the best of luck.